Hi everyone, welcome back. Have you ever wanted to edit your photographs but without the fuss? You know, you don't want to go in and you don't want to pay Adobe every month, like I've been paying them for the last four years, over $60 a month, which is insanity, for software that's quite complex, complicated to work with in terms of all the steps that you've got to carry out. It has mediocre features that haven't really upgraded their features for at least 20 years correctly, especially for painters and people who do in inline painting. And just in general, the, the, the shoddiness of their updates and their software and the fact that you've got to constantly pay for their software is just an abomination. But you don't want to have the difficulties of having to go through all the major work and the steps that you've got to follow to just do basic changes and really good changes. Well, let me let me highlight again an application that I use for 99% of my photography. When I do portraits, weddings, events, sports shooting, you name it, okay, landscapes, whatever, product photography, I will probably spend 99% of my time using Radiant Photo. A company called Radiant Imaging Labs created this software. And two years ago, when I went to the NEC photography show in Birmingham in the United Kingdom, I met one of my favorite landscape photographers, Elia Lacardi. And he's just incredible. He's got incredible photography online on landscapes. And nobody really can beat this kind of landscape photography. And he was at a stand and he was standing there and he was actually working with a stand, this company, and they were selling the software. And I went up and I met Eli and got some photos and all that, chatted and communicated by the software. And I'm very technical. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a technology freak. So I'm quite curious about software and I don't like the way Adobe does the work because it does too much. You can easily push the photography too far. And it's just too much work. It's just complicated. I mean, yeah, I can use it, but it's just annoyingly complicated and just wastes a lot of my time. So as soon as I started to see a demonstration of Radiant Photo, I was hooked immediately. I said, okay, where can I pay? Because they were they were releasing the software. It was brand new. It was being released at the show. And I thought, okay, I'm going to be one of the first to buy. I paid $99, once off payment for life. And I love it. It's got built-in artificial intelligence into the software. It has great machine learning to analyze tonality, color fidelic, tone mapping. Ha hue, saturation, luminosity, exposure, shadows, all that kind of stuff, right? Including color grading. But the best is, is that it doesn't push it too far. So as you start using it on the outset, immediately, bang, it starts to enhance your photographs. And then it gives you a great baseline to work with. So it goes to the point where it knows that's the optimal condition for the photograph. Now, you can take it further. You can go much further and you can really play, which I'm going to take you into this now to show you. But you don't need to. Seriously, you don't. And I, I've been using Radiant Photo now for all my weddings and portrait shoots going back at least the last two years. And I kid you not, I can turn around wedding photography, two to three thousand photographs within a couple of days. Easily. Whereas it used to take me three to four weeks in the past to do this. Dedicated editing in photographs. Now I can turn around photos within 24 to 48 hours maximum maximum, which customers love because they can get the stuff turned around faster. They're much happier. They can get access to the material faster. They can get stuff done. They can get prints. It's just it's wonderful. The, the result for me has been incredible with Radiant. And I thank everyone, including Eli, for actually creating the software. I think you guys have done a tremendous job. And from somebody who's been a photographer for almost 37 years and has used every single camera manufacturer on the planet, and most of the lenses out there, especially some of the new ones, I can tell you right now that I've never seen software this capable and this friendly ever in my entire life. Radiant really is a bar that cannot be reached easily. Now, when I have that 1% of photographs and I need to seriously go in and dig and edit, you know, really heavily edit, let's say do intense frequency separation, do things like blemish control and all that kind of stuff, really heavily dig into that. I have also moved over to a new product called Affinity Photo 2, Designer 2 and Publisher 2. Because I last month decided, because of what Adobe has been doing for the last five years with their software, even going back to 20 years, and what they've been doing with the licensing, and what they've been doing with the terms and conditions. I mean, it's pretty insane that that recently 
Adobe changed the, ter changed the terms and conditions and indicated that everything that everyone creates worth their software belongs to Adobe. So in, I'm working on client work and I've got a non-disclosure agreement with my client and Adobe has the right and the copyrights to take away my images and sell them and use them for machine learning and then also sell them online. Are you out of your effing mind, Adobe? Yeah, the, the massive backlash that Adobe has when it comes to this is, is huge. So that's why they backpedaled, changed the terms and conditions, and then, ha, ah, yeah, but it's too late. You showed how nefarious you are. Although I've known how bad you are all, the, all these years, but the problem was there wasn't great alternatives. Well, now there are. Radiant Photo came out two years ago, and they're absolutely destroying you. And uh, uh, Affinity Photo 2, you can't even come close to Affinity Photo 2 when it comes to editing photographs. Photoshop, you're nowhere near it. And Affinity Photo 2 works on all my devices. Exactly the same way. Laptops, PCs, tablets, everything. I love it. So, Radiant Photo and Affinity Photo 2, phew, my two main programs. And I can turn around photographs like that. And let me show you. I'm going to open up Radiant Photo. This is the interface. Those of you who haven't seen my previous photo, please go watch the previous photo, the, the previous video, sorry, because you can see how Radiant Photo actually works in much more depth. I'm just going to go very breezily through this and show you the kind of stuff that you can do. Those of you who've never seen the video and you don't want to watch the previous video, let me do a quick little roundup for you. Your zoom factor over here to zooming into the images, the smart presets that are built in by Radiant Photo on the left here, the presets that you can either get online most of the time for free or you can just create your own on the left here at the bottom. On the right hand side, you will probably either be in quick edit or detailed edit immediately and you get to see smart editing, which is global changes. You'll get to see tonality changes, color changes, skin tone changes, details. And then if it's a human, you'll look at face, skin, makeup, you name it, all of that. Now, then you go into color grading and you can go to the nth degree and go absolutely insane with a color grading. And it's just incredible power, absolutely incredible power. So let's come back to the detail edit. Let's go back to the basic sort of details here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up these images. They're all individual RAW files. These are Nikon RAW files. That's a Fujifilm RAW file. That is a Canon R3 RAW file. And that is a Leica Q3. And I've taken purposefully bad photographs to show you what the idea of Radiant Photo is all about. I'm not going to show you amazing photographs. I'm going to show you purposefully bad photographs on purpose so you can see. And I'm going to show you what Radiant does automatically. So I'm just going to drop those into here. And Radiant is automatically looking at the machine learning it knows. It picks up the tonality, picks up everything about the image, and it knows, well, that's to do with people. That one over there is to do with landscapes. That one over there is to do with, again, a landscape again. This is to do with a person again, and a person and a person. But more importantly, that's not what the photos look like. This is what the photo looked like in this case. So the photo looked like that. Now, of course, I'm not very happy with this. So I'm going to first of all, come along here and I'm going to crop this particular photo because I like to crop it into, in this case, a square, I think, oops, no, my bad. Let's do free resize and let's do square. I don't want to do one and one yet because I want to do first square to get enough of the shoe and then just a little bit higher. That's about right. Okay, there we go. Apply the crop and I'm happy. So basically what has happened is that's what the original image was and that's what Radiant Photo has done. It's pretty impressive. Now of course it's gone ahead and it's manipulated. Tonality, face details. I may do a couple more changes so I'm going to go back in here and I'm going to let me just zoom in a little bit more here. So I'm going to zoom in. I just want to show you I want to bring out the red colors and I'll bring out a little bit of his jacket and his top here. But at the same time, he's got too much working on his skin. He's lost his hair. The guy's lost his hair. Look, he's got hair. He's got hairy legs. I don't know why they put, you know, take away the hairs. I mean, he's a guy. He's not a woman. So let's let's uh, <laughs> let's uh, actually fix that a little bit here. So it can't be perfect. It's machine learning. So I can come along here and I can go, okay, let's do color fidelity. Now it's going to bring out, you'll notice it brings out the reds, the blues, and the greens, and the background. So there we go. Take the fidelity in. It also enhances the black as well. 
It's exactly what I want. Great. Vibrancy, that means it's going to add a bit more color to this. Probably would be a good idea because I want to show a bit more redness in his face. But I, I, I like I like the vibrancy to be off in this case. Then I come down here to where it says uh, sharpening. There's no need for a guy to be sharpened. It's not necessary. It was a decent enough shot. However, I may leave the sharpening in there. But what I will do is instead of having too sharp, I'm going to drop the radius down a little bit. So I can show a little bit of the legs there. And I might drop the sharpness a little bit further down. Yeah, just a little bit. That's fine. Maybe a bit more. Nah, let's take the sharpness off. Don't want that. What I probably will do is I will look at the noise in the actual shot. Of course, I took this as a bad shot. There was low, low light on purpose. And I will probably add a little bit of denoising. And once I've added a bit of denoising here, let's now go back to the sharpening and very briefly add the sharpening here. And I'm fine with it. I don't want to do too much. I'm pretty happy with it. And let's see the legs. The legs got the hair back. That's pretty cool. I'm happy with that. Nice. Okay. So everything's cool. I can see before and after. Very nice. Very useful. Very nice. This is what Radiant Photo does for you. And I'm done. The image is ready. I'm pretty cool. I don't have to do anything too crazy. I can go in and I can do a lot more crazier stuff. And I can save it all out, save it, done, and sort of. But what I want to do is something a little different here. I don't want to just play around with skin tonalities and details. I can go in here and actually enhance the face. I don't want to do any of that. I'm not doing a model yet. But under color grade, I do like playing around with color grade here. So you can experiment with selective colors, graduated filters, finishing tools, all to your heart's content here. However, I like to go into here and do a very quick update. And I do love this one particular kind of image. If I look at not the black and white, but the color film cast, uh, no, not even the color one, sorry, the color grades. Yes, I like this red trace and let me explain why I like the red trace. So as soon as I do this, I'm just gonna take away the, the emphasis from the background and really enhance the red colors and the black colors. And it's gonna produce a very different kind of image. Check this out. I do love this particular kind of look in this image, but it's a bit too strong, obviously, because I'm losing a bit of the color here, but I still want to keep this look of the contrast and that. So I'll come along here to the strength and just drop the strength a little bit. And uh, I'll be okay. I'm pretty much okay with it. So now effectively what it's done is it's gone from that to that. It's a pretty decent change and I'm happy with it. I'm now going to open it out, save it out as an image. Let's actually save it out and uh, boom save it out as a TIFF file and I'm pretty okay with it everything's good it's gonna help me process it as a TIFF file and I'll just close the photograph nice okay now in this one over here actually the photo was this so it's pretty dull on purpose it's taken in such a way that it makes it very difficult to see the actual photograph and what Radiant does immediately it knows it's landscape straight away I can come along here and bang, it actually pushes it. Now, it's quite interesting. So it does a decent job, but it's a bit heavy, I think. It's heavy handed. It was a terrible shot anyway. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my color grading here. And I will probably pick. I like the idea of vintage. But it's a bit heavy for this. It's a little bit heavy for this one. I may also look at color film and potentially look at classic color film, but that's again too heavy handed. So nope, it's not working for me. So I noticed there is something I need to go. I can't go into presets. I must go into a bit more manual testing here and go back into the settings here. And I, what I really want to do is I want to bring out the exposure a little bit. Just a bit more. And I want to enhance the vibrancy a little bit. So it creates a little bit more vibrancy. But again, push the exposure a bit more. And then come up here to sky toning. And let's, let's zoom out a little bit here. Let's go into sky toning. And I want to just see what it does with the sky. Yeah, this one's pretty good. But it's too blue both top and bottom. And I think it's pretty much okay. I think I'm happy with it. But the golden rod in terms of green is not good. I want to go maximum green here. So it really brings out those greens and I'm pretty happy with the result. I think I'm pretty cool with it. I'm all right. 
I don't have a problem with it. Sharpening, potentially I could drop the sharpness down a little bit less. And there we go, just to give it a bit more, <clears throat> a bit more oomph. And I'm okay with it. I might also do a little bit of denoising and bring the sharpness to what it was. Let me explain what I'm doing here. So if I look here, if you look at the roofs of the of the buildings here, that's where you notice the difference. So if I do the denoise here, so if I take the sharpening away, you see the sharpening is more visible on the roof, especially there. Look at the roof here. All right, look at that roof there. That's exactly where we want. We want to just bring it up. And this was a terrible shot. Absolutely terrible shot. Really terrible. I'll show you an incredible shot that I took. And you can get an idea of what can be done, of course. But more importantly, this is... I'm fine with it. Pretty happy with it. Good output. I can just... Yeah. Save it out. No problem. It's not the best photo in the world, but it definitely was a dramatic change between the original photo and this one. So there we go. Look at that. Look at that change. It's, it's huge. Absolutely huge. Massive change. Okay. So the other one was pretty interesting. Also a landscape. This was pretty good as well, but essentially it was really bad. So this is what came out. This is what it was originally. And let me explain this photograph. First of all, it's a place in Durban in South Africa. It's actually a, a view from outside my apartment uh, where I go there for holidays and stuff. And here's a race course track going around. And inside, there's actually a golf course inside the race course track. So <laughs> while you're playing golf, you can actually watch the races. Interesting. And of course, there's the beach over there. And uh, we're at quite a decent height over this. So I can pretty much see the whole of Durban. I've got a massive panorama of Durban. But the problem with this photograph was it's really dull because, and I purposely took it this way, because the photo was taken from behind glass behind glass that has a film to protect against the sunlight so clearly there's a problem here so i didn't take it outdoors but look at radiant it produces an output and makes it look like it's outdoors i mean listen no matter how much you pay for photoshop pulling this kind of thing off with photoshop will take you a long time to get this right trust me okay i've done nothing to this photo zero what i am going to do though is i'm going to definitely pop up a little bit of the exposure here but not too far because it knows it's gone too far there we go it's gone way too far so let's pick it up a little bit there and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to add a bit more vibrancy because there's a little bit more red that day and in terms of sky toning yep that was a decent day so i'm pretty happy with that but i want to go i'll do that particular color so it's not too heavy and I'm pretty cool with that. And that's a decent photograph. Now, let's zoom in a little bit here. It's reasonably sharp. Reasonably sharp. But it wasn't sharp towards the edges at the end there. And my main objective was to get the sharpness here. It wasn't a good shot. I've taken far better photographs, which take the sharpness there quite well. But I'm pretty happy with that. I'm ecstatic with the results. And if I look at the sharpness at the bottom, it's a relatively good amount of sharpening. But if I take it away, it's not that much better. It's just more sharpening in the front. The background is definitely sharp. It's infinity sharpening. In other words, the lens uh, focused in infinity, which essentially it got the sharpness at the back end. But the sharpness in the front end was missing. So what it does, it sharpens the front stuff here. Because the back end stuff, there's obviously humidity and all that. That's why you can't necessarily see, you know, easily down the back here. Because there's humidity, here, obviously. And there's a little bit of noise there. So I may just bump up a little bit of the denoising. I hope it doesn't mess about with the sharpness. No, it's pretty decent in terms of denoising. And I'm okay with that. So here we go. Job done. Image is finished. I can save it out. And I'm happy with it. So the crazy thing is, is that it's gone from a particularly bad image to that. How do you beat that? Adobe, good luck, my friends. You're terrible at this kind of stuff. I mean, I know I can do this with Affinity Photo, but Radiant Photo, the ability to do things very quickly and baseline your photographs is unbelievable. Not even Adobe Lightroom can perform like this. So, yeah, good luck, Adobe. Now, this one was a particularly bad photograph. It looked like this, which actually I kind of liked. It was a moody shot. It was an enjoyable shot. I really loved it. And I thought, ah, oh, this is great, you know. But I did miss a bit of the sharpness in the eye, and I didn't get the sharpness of that one. I got the sharpness of that eye, but not this one. But more importantly, Radiant does a little bit of a bounce, and it pushes that image to quite an extent. It takes away the green cast, 
too far from the skin. It takes it across a little bit further away, but it still keeps the green in. It's okay. It's not a brilliant output, but it's not bad. Notice, of course, this is a full-blown raw file. I've done nothing to her skin. Although, you know, she's got a few blemishes here and a few pimples and that, but it's not like bad skin. It's pretty good, you know, pretty decent. I mean, I've, with a bit of affinity photo later, I can play around with one, two, three, possibly four there, maybe five here, and just deal with the top part here and then take, the sh take this shine away and then I'm done. I don't need to do more. It's not necessary. She's a stunning model. But now I can take this a bit further. It's done what it needs to do, but it doesn't pick up the fidelity yet. I need, I need to add more fidelity here. So bring up the black colors and show the red colors out. Nice. So it's darkening the top stuff out. There we go. And then the vibrancy is okay. I don't want to do too much of vibrancy. Then there's no sky tones or anything like that. It's definitely skin tones. It does sharpen a fair amount. Let's go into there. Let's go into there, and it's sharpening decent. I mean, it's a decent shot anyway, but it's not... I should have caught that eye instead of that eye. The other photographs that I've taken with her have got those details on, but, you know, this was a terrible shot on purpose to show you what can go wrong and what <laughs> Radiant can actually do for you. I mean, I do love this moody shot, but I prefer that shot. Now, uh, the denoising is quite useful, but not in this, not in this particular image. I can go into the skins and I can do a bit more touch-ups here, but in all honesty, it's not really necessary. You can go down to where it says blemish removal and go crazy with blemish removal and do that, you know. But it's not as powerful, I would say, as intense as, a, as um, Affinity Photo 2. No, you, you, you take that kind of intense editing into Affinity Photo 2. It's much better for that. Now, am I happy completely with this? Well, actually, what we can do is we can color grade this. And I like the idea of pushing this as classic film. So let's see. And it just looks stunning. Absolutely stunning. In fact, light film is pretty cool as well. Warm film, not bad. Crushed film, very nice. Very, very nice. Teal film, not good for women, good for men though. That's too much. Deep film is too little. Light film looks interesting. Pop film, too much. So it's between classic film and light film. And I do love the light film because it adds a little bit more color back to her face, which is exactly what I want. But, you know, it darkens the background, hides her away a little bit. There's not enough separation there. Whereas I think that is separating her better. So you could take all of this, play around with this, play around with the strength. I can go in here and choose a strength here a little bit and then just, just give it a bit more strength there. So we can muck around with this a bit further if you want, but you can really go a selective color and really experiment with the lighting and the colors, I mean. Now, what I have done here is I've actually saved a previous setting for her. This one, SA2 Girl, and that's what I saved it to, which is pretty good, a decent one. And uh, essentially, when I'm happy, let's say I got to this point, let's go back to what it was. Let's say I was happy with this look, right? I could come along here, save the preset, SA2 Girl B over here. And there's the B version and there's the A version. So the B version is this one over here. The A version was that version over there. So pretty cool. Pretty cool. Obviously, that's better as a photograph or model. This is better if you want to create a nice moody shot. Good for social media type stuff. But that is definitely for print and so on. So I like this view. I'm pretty happy with it. Of course, a little bit of blemish control in that with Affinity Photo will be fine. And I will now take that and save it out and pretty happy with it i'm quite content did hardly any changes to the photograph and yet what's nice about this is that it went from that which looks like the green hulk to that that's huge change absolutely huge okay so far far better than what photo photoshop can do that at that speed so yeah Exactly. Perfect. This one over here was really interesting. Um, I did a great little shot with her and I actually have a very nice shot with her, but I did a modification where I actually created a beautiful output like this. But what I want to do with this one over here is come back to the detail edit here and take you into exposure and just potentially 
well look at the color section and look at a bit of fidelity I want to take away that light from the background here and add a little bit more vibrancy to give her a bit more of a tan because I kind of like that it's quite nice sky toning is nothing needed uh, skin tones she had, she had literally almost flawless skin this is Chloe she lives in Wales I'm going to probably do a shoot with her at some point after the holidays but she has truly incredible skin and is I don't need to do much to that photograph to be honest I mean it's incredible she's not even wearing that much makeup anyway so it's pretty impressive Chloe's got a great look on her and uh yeah I mean I could do a little bit of denoising but it's absolutely not necessary it really isn't and in terms of the sharpening it did a fair amount but if I if I drop the sharpening down it's not drastically different okay it's pretty decent what it does it just brings out the hair a little bit you might argue and say well no if it's doing too much of the hair that's going to shine too much so yeah you might want to have a more subdued look or you want to bring out the lighting I'm okay with that because it's fine and then when it comes to the actual skin if you really want to play with the skin you can highlight a face create a face on here and you can actually experiment and I can manually add a face and then show the controls in this case it's already automatically picked up the face if it isn't I can say add a manual face and pick the two points and then create a block around the face and then I can play around with all these things here and I can really experiment I can add a catch light so if you notice the catch lights quite cool here let's say I wasn't because I wasn't using flash at all there's no flash photography here there's zero flash we were in a garage where you park the cars underground and it was bad lighting look at that I mean that's what it was that's just insanity as to what radiant photo can do for you it's literally insane I, I love the changes and they're not going to go overboard that's the thing about radiant photo it doesn't go overboard it keeps just at the level that it needs to keep I can even do face contouring I mean Chloe doesn't need this but I could do this I could do face contouring it just slightly tapers the contour of the face but I don't like doing that it's not necessary uh, lip sharpening maybe a little bit because I wasn't focusing on her lips so let's see what it does yeah pretty decent it's a bit too strong though so let's drop that down to about 17 or 18 that's good enough for lip sharpening so essentially it went from that photograph which was really in the dark and I took like that on purpose although I have taken some really great shots with Chloe and it does that for her. bang produces this output which is crazy absolutely crazy so he has a very nice little result and eventually I sort of settled with the result like this but at the end of the day I love this color I love this output so basically I'm done save it out I'm pretty happy great response great result from radiant photo can't go wrong with this absolutely can't go wrong with this and yeah I can just close it down now the last little uh, image I've got here for you is another little portrait shot I did with Stevie she's a wonderful model in London uh, sorry from London but uh, currently she's in Wales in um, Swansea if I remember correctly um, and um, great model uh, first time I've seen a model that has an equal face left and right hand side where you can do photographs on either side and she looks amazing she's got near flawless skin and uh, incredible to see and a great shoot with her and again it was at the photography show this year in Wales and we had beautiful backdrops uh, uh, this is a shameless plug it's a company that creates hand painted backdrops unique for everyone so every time you get a, a hand painted backdrop nobody else is going to have that backdrop nobody if you want details of that channel I'll put the details in the description I love those backdrops and I'm definitely going to be getting a few of those soon now the output was great it was a very tricky outfit it was a very couture outfit and uh, it's a Versace outfit and essentially I wanted to put her in this background here and she was looking away and I have a shot here which I need to crop because I want to bring her I want to show more of the backgrounds for the other chap that I took the shots of but I'm going to bring this in a little bit here not too far and not terribly far I'm going to bring her not exactly completely in the middle and not too far up either but enough headroom to keep it going about there sort of line it up roughly with a shoulder that's about right and apply the crop now that's of course you know it's up to you how you want to use this I could have cropped further but I'm fine with that crop now if I zoom in here 
Let's zoom in here. Stevie's got an incredible uh, for, uh, sort of personality and especially a, a photogenic view. I didn't do a great job with this shot because it was really badly shot, but not terribly badly like the others, but it did a decent job to do the updates. Pretty decent. As you can see, it does a little bit of sharpening in the eyes, bit of the lips, sorts out the eyes and the hair, brings out the hair, does a great job. And of course, if I look further down, uh, when it comes to the dress, it really enhances the dress. Absolutely. I mean, this is a Versace jeans couture. Very cool. Great outfit. And if I come along here, you know, I can bring out all the necessary colors out of the dress. I think it's a little too bright in my opinion. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here, go back to this and just bring back the color fidelity and just bring back the darkness of that color just to have, the, there we go, a little bit better there, but not too bright. And then when I zoom back up again, it's going to be just enough for a face. I think it does a great job with it. Keeps the fidelity, everything, everything nice and smooth. And I'm pretty happy with that. You could go in and you could add a bit more sort of sharpening as well, if you like. Uh, I can just play around with the radius a bit further. I, not, I don't like doing this necessarily. I think I'm pretty happy with that. But let's see, if I don't do that, and then I do that again. No, I'm pretty happy without the extra sharpening. There's no need for that. I may, I don't need to do denoising because these backgrounds are hand painted, so there's no noise behind this. So I'm pretty happy with that output. Great, great job. I mean, it's gone from that to that, you know. Pretty cool. I love it. I think it was a great maneuver. And uh, yeah, save it all out. Pretty happy. Job done. Now. The cool thing is, I've also got a slight change with this because this image actually has a beautiful sort of output and I've made a nice preset for her and uh, it is a great preset and I've allocated it down here. So if you go back here and just, let me just activate this quickly. You'll see what I did here. So I'm going to revert the whole thing back to what it was. So effectively it was that, okay. And then with, together with what um, Radiant Photo has done, and then together with my little preset, I want you to take a look at the face a little bit here. Yeah? It just brings the color a little bit back in again, and I'm pretty happy with the output. So now when I zoom in here, I can see, yeah, everything's nice and clean, and it works, and a great sort of result. Fantastic result. And it's gone from literally that to that. And that's, that's a huge jump. Absolutely huge jump. So, I mean, phenomenal. You could go in and you could do contouring and all that. I mean, she doesn't really need it. There's a lot of things that we can do on the face as well. But, I mean, we can come down here to where it says contouring. And uh, I can take off the contouring out here and really maneuver it. You know, so bring out more natural view. I just decided to give a little bit more contour and then it just tucks it in a little bit, gives it a bit more view and sharpens the lips a little bit. That's what that preset's all about. And yeah, it looks fantastic. Stevie loved the shot. Of course, I produced a better shot than this for her with actual flash photography, but I've took one without the flash just to see what Radiant can do. And it did a great job. Absolutely phenomenal job. So now I'll just save that out and yeah, job done with Radiant and it's incredible result i think um when you get when you get res results like this one radiant photo it just it's i don't have to do anything with this photograph it's there's no need to do anything else and uh, i'll just close it down let's close down the view here and these are the actual images that were created let me bring them in so the first image that was created well i, I won't do it in order but there's that first one pretty decent output then this one over here, great result, love it. Phenomenal result as well. Managed to recover this really well because this was bad setup. And uh, yeah, Chloe did very well in this shot as well. That's a pretty decent landscape. And of course, the last shot with Stevie was just great actually. So essentially, when you look at you know these shots before and after, they're just unbelievable. 
absolutely unbelievable. So I wanted to give you a bit of a rundown in terms of how to use Radiant. And you know, you can turn around photographs really quickly without having the need to go and get complicated software like Adobe and so on. But if I wanted to do tailor-made, really heavy, intense changes and fixes, to those particular images, then I would probably use something like Affinity Photo 2. So in terms of Affinity Photo 2, although this is not the video for it, I'm going to just open up Affinity Photo just to quickly show you. And I'm going to take that one image that I had earlier with uh, Stevie, okay? And I'm going to drop that in here just to show you. And then I'm going to zoom in here. Of course, that's the Siri system going crazy. So I'm going to zoom a little bit out here, which is about right. And then I've got all sorts of types of sharpening that I've got. I've got a bunch of presets sort of that I use inside Affinity. And I've got this little edge contrast, which is rather interesting. It's quite a nice one. It creates a nice little edge contrast, but it adds a lot of noise into the image. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop that opacity right down and give myself maybe an additional, say, 18%, maybe even 27%. Yeah, that's about right. So essentially what's going to happen is that's what it was before. And that's what it is often. It's very little noticeability. You can't really notice it easily, but you'll notice it in the eyes predominantly. Very slight. And you'll also notice it in the outfit. Okay. It's very slight. And now that's all I need to do. I'm not going to go into too much complexity. I think I'm pretty much okay. And um, because I do a lot of sort of photography out there, I do things like artistic type photographs. I have colors. I have color sort of manipulation with lab work. I do astrophotography. Uh, this special, specialized sharpening. I've got a very nice cue of how to do all these things and shortcuts from another chap that I found online, which is brilliant. And uh, yeah, I just love these shortcuts. It just makes my life a lot easier because if I look at the breakdown of these changes, it's doing what we call a band pass mask and it's adding the sharpness against that. And uh, it just does a great job with it. Absolutely great job. And then when I'm happy, I'm happy. I can just save it and go for it. Now I'm not gonna do any kind of saving. I'm not worried about this, but this by the way, was taken with a Leica Q3. And this is only a 28 millimeter. So yeah, and it was a very bad shot originally. I purposefully took a bad light shot. So I just wanted to show you what you can do. And uh, yeah, at the end of the day, Radiant Photo comes to the rescue for 99% of the time for me. I hardly ever touch my photos. If I have to, I'll use Radiant to just go in to just do quick baseline changes. And if I have to truly edit a photo very heavily, I will then use Affinity Photo too, because I, I don't need Adobe anymore. I got rid of all the Adobe software. That's two two weeks ago. I got rid of all the the the, the files that I created with them because they were stealing information from people. They were stealing people's files and using them for themselves, selling them, and also training the large language model for machine learning. Really, with that, really, Adobe. That's not just unethical and nefarious, but it's it's fraudulent. And okay, they changed then backpedaled and changed the terms and conditions again. But you know, guys, Adobe needs to be taken to task for this. You guys need to be taken to court. I'm sorry. It's, it's not acceptable. Adobe, you are very wrong here. But luckily today we have alternatives. Radiant Photo, phenomenal alternative. You cannot touch it when it comes to AI and machine learning because it was created by photographers, not by suits, not by programmers or developers. And Affinity Photo 2, once again, created by photographers. And what's so great about those two programs? Both Radiant Photo and Affinity Photo. It's a one-off payment. Phenomenal. For those of you who want the details about Radiant Photo and Affinity Photo 2, there'll be details in the description. There's also a very cool six-month free trial on Affinity Photo 2 if you want it. I don't have any affiliation to any of these two companies. I purchase the products. I use them. I love them for my work. You can look at my website, obphoto.com, where I've got my photographs on there. You can look at my Instagram account on under, um, at obpixel with an underscore. 
and you can see the photographs I take and I, I don't stick to one genre of kind of photography. So I love what I'm getting as a result with Radiant Photo. And if I have to dig deep and get into a photo really heavily, like let's say clean up blemishes or take out some, some um, uh, bit of healing, spot healing, that kind of thing, then I'll use Affinity Photo 2 and that's it. That's as far as I go. Otherwise, thanks everyone for watching the video. Thank you to my subscribers for subscribing to my channel. I appreciate you. Thank you to everyone who's new to my channel who decides to subscribe. And if you don't, no problem. But if you do, it's not going to cost you anything. It's just a click of a button on the subscribe and notification because it just helps the algorithm push my videos to other people that haven't seen the video. That's all it is. And I'm hoping to make better videos and more informative videos for most of you out there. And just let me know if you want to see more details about these programs. I'm more than happy to demonstrate. I don't go into too much technical detail, although I can, but I don't have to. And at the same time, I try to make as, as, as informative as I can, but more real life situation type of usage when it comes to my videos. And it's all about media, technology and lifestyle. Otherwise, thanks everyone. It's Demetrius here again from OB Pixel here and today with regards to OB Photo and talking about Radiant photo the application from radiant imaging labs which is absolutely phenomenal and and must buy for all photographers in my opinion just because you're going to save so much time thanks everyone demetrius again signing out